Hi everyone, how are you? I want to speak to you today about groin pain and how many of your athletes, clients, and patients may be complaining about pain within the front of their pelvis, also known as the groin. Now this is a part of the pelvis that is placed under a lot of stress. Now, regardless of you doing cycling, running, you're in different athletic positions, maybe you sit a lot, maybe you do body weight training, whatever it is, there's a lot of force going through this part of your pelvis. And if you are not stabilizing the pelvis upon movement, you could potentially be setting yourself up for an injury. So now when we think about our pelvis from an anatomy perspective, is that we have these small muscles in the base of our pelvis, obviously your pelvic floor, your TBA, your psoas, and then your obliques blend into these structures. And if you do not create what is called local reflexive stabilization of these deep muscles and your pelvis, then all of these larger muscles surrounding your pelvis can start to create imbalances and increase stress. Some of the most common muscles that create imbalances in the front of the pelvis is going to be your TFL and your adductor longus. Now, when we think about groin pain, there are several differentials. Now, some of those big or main differentials are going to be a hip labrum tear. So a hip labrum tear, where your hip joint is actually smack in the center of your groin or the front of your pelvis, that's where your femoral head is sitting in the socket. If you tear the labrum, it's obviously going to radiate or present in the center of your groin. That's probably one of the most common. Another one could be a adductor longus tendinitis or a spasticity of your adductor longus, which can actually present some of the other differentials as well. You have osteitis pubis, which means you have inflammation on the pubic tubercle, and that is where your adductor longus and a lot of these complex fascial abdominal muscles insert. You could have what's called coccyx saltans, which is a snapping hip. So when you go from ex sorry flexion into extension, you'll get a pop in your hip. That's called coccyx saltans. And then the additional one that I want to speak about is called athletic pubalgia or a sports hernia. Now all of these, one of the um, diagnosis of elimination would be definitely athletic pubalgia or sports hernia. I've actually had a sports hernia. I tore my abdominal aponeurosis. So your rectus abdominis and your obliques and your TVA and your pelvic floor, they all blend into this myofascial web that sits in the front of your pelvis across in your pubic symphysis and blends into your adductor longus. So this fascial connection, this functional front line, which is what is referred to, is under a lot of tension. And if you do not maintain balance in those fascial structures, then the adductor longus essentially wins the tug of war and it pulls down. And then your abdominal aponeurosis goes like this and it's a tear. So a sports hernia is a tear in the abdominal aponeurosis or the pubic aponeurosis. Now, this is again something that I experienced back in 2012, nope, sorry, 2015, woo, time flies, 2015. And I got this injury after years of doing competitive cycling. I was a gymnast for 13 years. So my alignment of my pelvis definitely favors the anterior tilt position. So I am in a position that favors adductor longus dominance. And then I was, I did a, a long ride and then I went to the gym and I was hanging on a bar and I was lifting my legs, similar how they'll do kips to the toes to the bar in CrossFit, but I was holding it, holding in that position. And I was holding it and my abdominals fatigued, but my adductor longus had more strength, so it pulled and then I ruptured the aponeurosis. So this is something that I personally experienced. I won't go into the surgery and the repair and things like that, but what was the root cause of the tear, the sports hernia, was an imbalance in the functional front line and this aponeurosis versus adductor longus. Now, part of that is yes, maintaining proper skeletal alignment, rib cage, pelvis stacking, 
but it's also making sure that the timing of the stabilization of the deep muscles of the pelvic floor and the pelvis in general are engaging before these larger global muscles. This is something that we speak a lot about at EBFA, and we use that as the way to establish foot-to-core sequencing. So foot-to-core sequencing is a local reflexive stabilization pathway to make sure that our feet are stabilizing fast enough, your pelvis is stabilizing fast enough, and your feet and your pelvis are talking to each other fast enough to support the proper stabilization patterns. So if you have a client, an athlete, or a patient who is complaining about groin pain or adductor spasms, I want you to start thinking about these differentials, this myofascial tug of war, the skeletal alignment, but also the timing of coordination of those deep stabilizers. We have a course called Pelvic Balance. So if you go to EBFA Global and you search for Pelvic Balance, this is a course that we have online on our Teachable School, but we also teach it in person. And it was created by myself and Dr. Federico Luzzi, our Global uh, Education Director for EBFA. And it's all about finding balance in the front of the pelvis and the back of the pelvis. And yes, it ties into the pelvic floor, but it's really looking at some of the common imbalances. How do you assess and then how do you correct or prevent these injuries from happening? If you want to learn more about what's going on in the pelvis, what's happening in the feet, how do you create foot to core sequencing and specifically athletic pubalgia, please head to ebfaglobal.com. I hope you have an amazing day.